animation. A groundbreaking phenomenon which for years has brought to life many a great animated film. Got new world, here we come. There is not one method to this style. Stop motion, 3D, 2D, anime and many more. Each containing their own stories of fantasy, real life and even stories of romance, family and loyalty. However, in all things we must ask one simple question. Where did the journey of animation begin? To find out, I'm going to take you on a journey back in time. <laughs> Not inside a phone box, I assure you. Through this journey, we shall see how animation has evolved into the phenomenon it has become today, and how it continues to be something more. Now, shall we begin? Our journey begins here in the Stone Age, thousands of years ago. For you see, animation shares a similar history with that of art. From the very first drawings of walls and caves, movement within images was depicted even before animation was considered to be an element of success. Throughout the intervening years, many evolving cultures had depicted images within movement, such as the mighty Egyptians, with their carvings on their temples, and the ancient Greeks translating their legends through even the depictions and in carvings on vases. It was like animation was actually a chain of events set in motion to create the phenomenon it is today. Again, animation and art share similar ground, for in the year 1419, during the Renaissance era, famous artist Leonardo da Vinci depicted the different angles of movement in his Virtue Vivian Man piece, showing that once again animation has been sewn into history even before it was considered an entertainment. We are now in the time of the Industrial Revolution, between the 18th and the 19th century, a time where machines were beginning to rise from the ashes. And it was this particular time where slowly but surely, animation was taking the next step, the step of life and movement. The technical side of animation began with the invention of a device called the Magic Lantern in the year 1603, and was considered to be the first projected animation device invented by genius Christian Huygen in 1603. The development of this led to other animation devices and they were marketed as toys. The zoetrope invented by mathematician William George Horner in the year 1834. Using spinning mirrors and light 
to help depict the images moving inside the device. The thermotrope, which was invented by John Arton in the year 1824, followed a similar principle, except it was a spinning coin attached to two pieces of string. But in actual fact, it was inspired by a spinning bone disc that was uncovered by archaeologists in 1868, which was dated around 14,000 years ago. As we entered the early 20th century, it marked the beginning of short animated cartoons, and the first was stop-motion animation, soon followed by hand-drawn animations. In the year 1914, near the time of the war, we were introduced to what is considered to be the first character-based cartoon, named Gertie the Dinosaur which was using the method of hand-drawn animation combined with stop-motion. This was the world's very first cartoon. Following the production of Felix the Cat came a cartoon short featuring a character that would soon change the course of animation for years to come. This character was Mickey Mouse, featuring in his first ever cartoon short, Steamboat Willie, which was produced in 1928. In the wake of the cartoon's success, along with the development of many others, built the foundations of Walt Disney Studios. built by the man who inspired us all. Walt Disney, born 1901, on, on December 5th. The man who was, no question, a genius in animation. Who, with his brother, uh, Roy Disney, co-founded Walt Disney Studios which slowly flourished into the biggest animation production company ever built. He founded many a theme park, the Ark in Disney's name, and he even founded the Cal Arts College in 1961, where future animators John Lasseter and Brad Bird educated to become the people that they are today. With their studio staff, they created Donald Duck Goofy, and many of the characters that we see flourishing in Disney animations today. But sadly, in the year 1966, the passing of a titan. And while Walt Disney's passing may be a saddening moment in animation history, his legacy lives on through the animations and movies that are shown to us on the screen today. And, Mr. Disney, wherever you are out there, thank you, sir. God rest his soul. In the year 1910, the Japanese weren't far behind with the birth of their own animation, anime and manga, which were inspired by Disney animations themselves. And famous manga artist and cartoonist Osamu Tezuka made anime the sensation it has become today, with the production of an iconic character, Astro Boy, in the year 1963. Then he founded his own production company. That gave way to the rise of many other anime companies that we see today. For if it weren't for that, manga and anime wouldn't exist today and provide good and um, <clears throat> rather wholesome entertainment.
Between the year 1930 and 1950s, the world had entered a new age, which would later become known as the Golden Age of Animation in the United States of America. With the rise of Walt Disney Studios, many other animation production companies began to rise from the example that Disney had set them, one of which was Warner Brothers Studios. Founded in the year 1923, Warner Brothers Animation began to rise with their own animated shorts, inspired by the very Disney characters we see today. It became known as Merry Melodies, a short load of animated shorts. But however, as the intervening years passed, it became known by another name. Roll em. Looney Tunes, a cartoon series featuring the wacky exploits of Bugs Bunny, Daffy Duck, and many more, much Wabbit like their related season. friends in Disney animation. Wabbit season! Wabbit season! Duck season! Fire! Well, mostly. During this time, a revolutionary new technology had begun to develop, and from the labors, it gave birth to the multiplane camera in the year 1933. Here's how this camera works. The way it works is that the camera faces down from a standing structure rather than horizontally. It photographs the movements of the background layers that are presented on planes of oil painted glass. The movements of each background element, foreground, midground, will be moved in opposite directions to show the illusion of movement in the background itself. Once the background layer maintains in place for elements like moon or the sun in some backgrounds. At the same time, the background can be moved toward or away from the camera to show how an instance of zooming in or zooming out of a scene frame. Operating this camera is a team effort and the cameraman needs to make sure everything is in order before moving on. Because if there's one miscorrection in the placing of the panels, it would jeopardize the scene. This device was essentially the front runner to the computer software that is used on background animation today. The Japanese quickly adapted this style for use in the Studio Ghibli movies such as Howl's Moving Castle and Whisper of the Heart, two of my personal favorites. This technology was used to produce Disney's first hand-drawn animated film, Snow White and the Seven Dwarves in the year 1947. The success of this film and its animation style set the boundaries for the films that followed in the years to come. Such as Dumbo, Cinderella, Pinocchio, and of course, The Little Mermaid. Many of the multiplane cameras have sadly been lost to the ashes of time. And to this day, only three are left in existence, the location of which is unknown. As the years went by, technology became more advanced as we entered the world of computers, an element that would change the face of the animation industry forever. Animators and artists John Lasseter and Glenn Keane began experimenting with 2D animation with 3D work whilst he was employed at Disney. In the wake of the first computer-generated film, Disney's Tron, a live-action feature using the latest in computer animation tech that was released in 1982. Over the years following, films and television series using computer animation such as Star Wars and Star Trek began to blossom into life, and 3D was getting recognition. Watch it, watch it. Ah! The first ever 3D animated film to hit the screens was a short film named The Avengers of Andre and Molly B, created by future director John Lasseter which was made with the use of computer animation. 
which later led to the development of a device called the Pixar Image Computer, which was actually what gave birth to Pixar Animation Studios. In the wake of Pixar's birth, they began to collaborate with the new leaders of Walt Disney Studios, producing films like The Rescuers Down Under in 1990, followed by Beauty and the Beast in 1991, using 2D and 3D animation together as one. Warner Brothers soon followed suit with this idea in their animated film, Quest for Camelot, which was released in 1998. Featuring some of the comedic attributes that Warner Brothers brought to our screens throughout the years that passed. In the year 1995, which coincidentally was the year I was born, came the creation of Pixar's first feature-length computer animated film. No! This is the part where we blow up! Not today! Toy Story. Which opened the floodgates to the production of A Bug's Life, which, in turn, put Pixar Animated Studios on the Hollywood map. This is falling with style. Beyond. 3D animation began to take the world by storm with the release of Toy Story 2, followed by the success of Monsters Inc., Finding Nemo, and The Incredibles, directed by John Lasseter's former classmate, Brad Bird. But this did come at a price. The world of 2D animation was being swept away by the advancements of 3D animation and its rising popularity. However, all was not lost for 2D animation. Years later, Disney and Pixar reformed a joint partnership with each other, leading to the production of films such as Disney Pixar's Cars, which made its debut in the year 2006. The story of rookie Lightning McQueen, who needed to learn to slow down. I gotta say it. Then the production of Ratatouille, and the animation technology advanced ever since then. Establishing the balance that lives on to this day. To this day, animation has become a rip-roaring success and continues to amaze and inspire the modern audience today. With the release of Disney's most recent successes, Big Hero 6, Frozen, and Moana, followed with DreamWorks Animation's reboot of an iconic cartoon, Voltron, Defender of the Universe, a personal favorite of mine. The animation techniques just demonstrate how well animation has evolved and adapted over the past few centuries. It has very much come a long way from being simple drawings on walls and caves to toys that we play with as children to spinning coins. Even to this very day, technologies are being developed to further progress and evolve animation and to allow aspiring artists like myself and countless others to take on the mantle that many amazing creators such as Walt Disney had started. But as we progress into the future, we must remember the techniques of the past. Techniques that got animation companies like Disney, Aardman, DreamWorks Animation, Nickelodeon, Studio Ghibli, and many others that follow in their footsteps to where they are today. In my honest opinion, animation from this point on will be taken to, as a wise man once said, to infinity and beyond.